Hello, this is Cheetah showing off the solutions to the puzzle Water Not Water, where you take water and you output water. Alright, so we'll start off with JFB1337. In our first reactor, we will input a molecule, flip it around, and split it down and output it. In our second reactor, we then grab one of the atoms, split it apart, and fuse it together and to end up with a hydrogen left over. And we attempt to do it eight times, so then we output the molecule, output the molecule, output the hydrogen, and we go back to this reactor where we grab the molecule, or atom, not molecule, output it, grab the hydrogen, and output it. So we follow that hydrogen, and up here, we will just fuse hydrogens together until we form an oxygen, which we will then bond one hydrogen to. And then a little bit later, we bond a second hydrogen to and output. As you can see, that was fairly slow, and we still have to do that another 39 times, so let's speed things up. Alright, so about two minutes later, we're finishing up with 57,508 cycles. Okay, and on to the next. Next, we have Juggernaut, who thankfully solved this much faster than JFD1337. So we start out in here, where we split off the erbium and have some extra waste. So uh, follow the erbium. We split it down until we get oxygen, using the uh, other parts together, until we get a helium. We then, uh, then uh, put the hel oxygen helium, and we have some more waste. So with the oxygen and helium, uh, we input the oxygen, and we split the helium apart and bond it to the oxygen. Drop it and output. So, not that bad. So, slow though, because we're only getting a single water out of each input. So, let's just watch this to completion. Uh, see how fast we got. And so, that's 1981 cycles. And we'll move on. Now we have Waypoint. Darkin did something somewhat interesting in its first reactor because it actually forms mercury, which very nicely splits down to neon, uh, neon, which has the same weight as water. So we take mercury, we form zirconium, split the zirconium, form calcium, form a calcium stick. And from that, we will form a whole bunch of neon. We also had uh, passed the erbium onto this reactor. Not entirely sure why Waypoint thought that was a good idea, but he did it anyway. Next, we have the neon, which we then split and fuse to form oxygen. And then we have our hydrogen bonded onto that drop it and output it to form our water. So, this isn't that bad of a setup. However, his uh, method to turn neon into water is pretty slow. 
requiring this very long buffer pipe. I've actually even formed this calcium, however, it's never come across, so it doesn't matter. So Waypoint gets 892 cycles. Now we have in our first reactor. We grab the acetine, split it twice to get our gallodinium, and then we drop everything else out into a trash pipe following the gallodinium. Uh, Um, we will split it and output all the extra parts into a pipe that feeds back to itself. And then we grab those extra parts, splitting them down to, and feeding them back to itself, always stripping off the single oxygen each time. So when we follow the oxygen, we then put it through a uh, four to one slit, and if we follow the one, we come to a similar reactor as before, and we uh, take the oxygen and we split it down to hydrogen. This one's just a bit simpler because you can't split hydrogen, and so we don't have to worry about accidentally splitting too much. Then if we follow the hydrogen and the oxygen from before, we can then form our water and be done. And so you can see the two feedback loops right there. Finish. We have 790 cycles. Alright, so now we have Blue Eyed Drop, and in his first reactor, let's, we grab water, we split the erbium to make two seleniums, and then we split the acetine, split the uh, tungsten, fuse them together to get lithium and zinc. And then we just throw everything else down here. So what is he doing with this selenium and zinc? Well, they add up the gallodinium so he can very easily split everything down to oxygen. And then if we go back and we follow everything else, I will have to restart it. as it backs up so quickly. So what we can do is we grab one, split it, split it again. So we split it four times. We then do the same thing over here, which then guarantees that everything is less than lithium. And so in a final reactor, we can grab the lithium and split it, and we get a stream of hydrogen. So, when we combine this hydrogen with the oxygen, we get our water. And so this is pretty nice design because it has absolutely no waste, it just backs up a lot, but that doesn't matter because it manages to uh, get all the oxygen and hydrogen that it needs to complete. So, finishing up, we have 724 cycles. Alright, so that's it for the participation solutions. Next up in 8th place we have the Void. Here we 
uh, split the erbium down to chlorine. So if we follow the chlorine, we just split it once, we get an oxygen and a fluorine. So the oxygen will become part of the water, and then if we follow the fluorine, we split it down to two hydrogens, and using the remaining parts into a nitrogen, which also is waste. Following the hydrogen and the oxygen from before, we form our water to finish. So that gives us 603 cycles. Seventh place goes to Mr. Blarney and for being one of the first to really realize how fast this puzzle can be solved. So let's see how he did it. This first reactor, we take the acetine, split it. We actually output both the scandium and the gallididium. So let's see what happens with those. The scandium gets split, giving us a, ne a neon and a sodium, and the gallidinium gets split into two germaniums. In the germanium uh, reactor, we very simply split it down to oxygen. Alright, so going back, we have the neon and the sodium. These are being uh, split and fused together in order to create more oxygen. So we create uh, more oxygen rather than just splitting them down directly because we want to very quickly be able to create helium instead of hydrogen. And with this helium, we split it and by rotating the molecule around, we can synchronize the two Waldos without any sinks, and manage to get them down to outputting every seven cycles. Alright. So, Mr. Blaney comes in with 351 cycles, cutting more than a third of the cycles from the void solution. Next up, we have newcomer results in sixth place. In our first reactor, we grab the erbium and we split it down to chlorine, with everything else being waste. If we follow the chlorine, we grab pairs, chlorine split off an oxygen, which surprisingly does not crash the reactor. And then we have the pairs of fluorine. So with the fluorine, we uh, split off a beryllium, split that down to helium, and then the extra fluorine and boron are of waste. We follow the helium. We have a 12 cycle double pump, so that's every six cycles we are outputting two hydrogen. And then in our last reactor, we have the oxygen from before, along with the two hydrogen, uh, again on 12 cycles double pump to give us a water every six cycles. If we just watch this to completion. That's 308 cycles. Next up in fifth place, we have Alexmi in the first reactor. Uh, we split the astatine, split it again, split it a third time to give a scandium, a neon, and a sodium. We can then fuse the scandium and sodium together to form a germanium, and we can drop out with the neon, and the germanium splits into two sulfurs. 
for the neon. We can then split it a few times to throw away a hydrogen and then fuse to make an oxygen. I mean a helium. And then with the oxygen we can uh, split it down to the heliums. And with these heliums can be split into two hydrogens. Anyway, we can then split the sulfur that we had from before into our oxygens for the water, bond on two hydrogens, rotate an output, giving us an 11 cycle double pump or 5.5 cycles per output. And if we watch this to completion, we have 302 cycles, a mere 6 cycles ahead of results. In fourth place, we have Semila on our his first reactor. We have the acetate, which we split down and fuse together to form our gallodinium. Then everything else goes into a waste pipe. In our next reactor, we split the gallodinium down to sulfur, and this is just a way to grab the gallodinium on the first cycle possible. And then the sulfur, the red wall though. Well, I'll put one oxygen down and three oxygens up, and the blue wall will we'll put two oxygens, oxygens up, but uh, only runs every other time, giving us a total of two oxygens down, two four oxygens up, so we'll put with, uh, two oxygens, I mean eight oxygens up. Uh, following the two oxygens, we have, uh, we just split it down to hydrogen very quickly, and then the two hydrogens, along with the oxygen from before, get bonded together and rotated to form our water. And this is 11 cycles double pump to give us 5.5 uh, cycles per output. However, Zemilo was able to fit this in just five reactors instead of six, allowing him for a much quicker startup time. And so if we just watch this to completion, we have 285 cycles. In third place, we have GG Gaul. It's a very complicated first reactor. In here, we uh, split the acetine twice, fuse it with the tungsten, and split some more to get our chromium. And then we use the scandium to form our gallodinium. And we split to form some more chromium and a vanadium. So if we follow the chromium and vanadium, as we just uh, split it down to lithium, we just speed that up a bit. And then our vanadium, which we put over here, which and an extra chromium that we actually never use because we just bond it to the vanadium and leave it as waste. We then uh, go back, actually, back, and then follow the lithium, where we bond two together, and uh, just split it apart to form our hydrogen. And then if we go back to follow the gallodinium, and let's restart this. And here we just are grabbing on the first cycle. And so then we can split the gallodinium down to oxygen. And like you saw before, a stick of erbium will be formed here as waste. And then go to the oxygen and the hydrogen from before. We can 
uh, fuse everything or bond everything together to form our water. And Juju Gal does this in 10 cycles double pumped or 5 cycles per output. Alright. Watch this to completion. We get 270 cycles. In second place, we have Spag Temp, who thankfully has a much simpler solution than GG Gall. We start out by splitting the erbium down to chlorine and throwing everything else away. That chlorine then gets bonded into pairs and split to form a pair of fluorine and a pair of oxygen. The fluorine then gets split to form a stream of beryllium, which then produces this very cool beryllium stick, which allows both of the walls to stay at the far right of the reactor and produce a hydrogen on an average every other cycle, which is really fast. The hydrogens on the top get bonded to the oxygens from before, and we output hydroxyl radicals. The hydroxyl radicals, along with the other half the hydrogen, is then bonded together in output to form our water. And because Bikem only had to input twice rather than three times, he was able to make this loop smaller and get it down to eight cycles and still double pump it for a total of one water every four cycles. However, because Spagen used all six reactors, his first molecule takes much longer to output. And so, if we watch this to completion, Stag 10 gets 267 cycles, just ahead of GG Gold. And in first place, we have Tough Thought. In our first reactor, we very simply split the erbium into chlorines, where half of them go up and half of them go down. That's why the ones that go down is a little bit simpler. So what we do is we split the chlorine to get us some oxygen, but again to get a breathing, bond them together, and throw the boron away. Well, ah, well, well sorry. Uh, let's start that again. So we get the beryllium and oxygen, we bond them together, and we make a stick out of beryllium and oxygen. And then over here, in every eight cycles, we take the uh, beryllium and oxygen pairs and turn them into a hydroxyl radical and a hydrogen. And then in the other stream, we do almost exactly the same thing. However, the blue welder has to do a bit more in order to get the extra two waste atoms out of the way. And then we have our beryllium and oxygen, just like before, and we form a stick, except this time it's upside down, and then I'll put hydroxyl radicals in hydrogen. And then our last reactor, we just bond the thing, bond them together, and combine them into a single output. Our red wall is able to do this in eight cycles, so I have to go to the right. Our blue wall has an extra cycle uh, because he has to get move it up a little bit. So that brings it to about four and a quarter cycles per output. Also, since Huffman was able to split it into two separate streams that each have four reactors, instead of Spagchem's total of six reactors, Tuffa is able to uh, get that first water output much quicker than Spagchem was able to. 
it. So if we just watch this to completion, we have 245 cycles. All right, that's it. And I hope you guys had as much fun with this puzzle, water not water, as I did.